The Hyundai Santa Fe. In many ways, it's a brilliant SUV because it offers proper seating for seven people for much less money than you spend on something like a Land Rover Discovery. If only it looked a bit more interesting. Well, good news, because there's a new version. We've seen a couple of photos of it already, and I promise you it's one of the most radical redesigns you'll ever see. And I think it's fair to say the most divisive Santa Fe in recent years as well. One thing's for sure though, it definitely isn't boring. We're about to see it in the metal for the very first time, so we'll give you a full walk around of the exterior styling. We'll also be having a good poke around on the inside as well, and I'll be telling you everything we know so far about the new fifth generation Hyundai Santa Fe in Santa Fe. Now, if you aren't familiar with the Santa Fe, it's the biggest SUV Hyundai sells in the UK. It's a seven seater, although with this new model, different seating configurations will be available. We'll talk you through all of that later. And it's about the same size as a Kia Sorento or a Land Rover Defender 110. Now, of course, all modern car design takes some inspiration from what's come before, whether that's from a manufacturer's own lineup or from competitor brands. But most of the time, it's difficult to pinpoint exactly where those influences have come from. With the new Santa Fe, almost everyone back at the Watt car office in unison when we saw the images a couple of weeks ago said that this front three-quarter angle looks like a Land Rover Discovery 4. In fact, one person said it looks like a Grand Theft Auto version of a Discovery 4. And I thought that was a pretty good description actually because clearly it's different enough that Hyundai isn't going to get into any legal hot water, but certainly the silhouette, the profile, that boxy styling is very reminiscent of a Disco 4. You might spot influences from some other SUVs too, including perhaps the Lincoln Navigator, which isn't sold in the UK, and the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which as of a couple of months ago is. So it has these chunky wheel arches, similar to what you'll find on a lot of more robust off-road focused 4x4s. In fact, this squared off shape is very similar to what you'll see on a lot of Jeep models, actually. There is an extension down the bottom here with a curve on it, but apparently that's only there because of aerodynamics. Squared arches aren't particularly good for that. And if you come around to the side, you'll notice that the shoulder line here rises quite gradually, but noticeably towards the rear of the car. And that stops the rear end from looking too big, too blocky. In fact, the whole car, when you see it in the metal, looks a lot more compact, a lot smaller than perhaps it does in the photos. Now around at the front here, you will spot quite a few H's. Fairly obviously there's one here in the headlight, but there is also a second H down here on the front bumper. And a third one is created by this LED light bar that runs right across the front grille and connects up with the headlight. But that will not be available in the UK. In fact, in all of Europe because apparently that light bar doesn't perform particularly well in Euro NCAP safety tests, so it's been dropped. Globally, there are 11 paint colors to choose from on the new Santa Fe. It hasn't been decided exactly how many of those will be offered in the UK yet, but it's pretty safe to assume this terracotta orange will make the cut. When it comes to alloy wheels, Again, globally, 21-inch alloy wheels like these will be the standard, but the UK and the rest of Europe apparently will be taking smaller 20-inch alloys. Hyundai hasn't, though, ruled out offering bigger versions in the UK in the future. The new Santa Fe is based on the same N3 underpinnings as the outgoing model, and it's the same width and within a fraction the same height as well, but it is longer. So the car has been stretched. It's 45 millimeters longer overall, and actually the wheelbase, that's the distance between the front and the rear wheels, has grown by 50 millimeters. Hyundai says this is an open for more concept. Now that strapline isn't particularly descriptive, but Hyundai says it means the new Santa Fe is designed to be well suited to urban and suburban life, as it always has been, but now better than ever at tackling the great outdoors. Hyundai isn't making any bold claims about off-road ability though, so it's a safe bet this won't be able to tackle the sort of terrain a Land Rover Defender or a Jeep Grand Cherokee can but apparently there is a slightly better ground clearance than in the outgoing model and a better approach angle as well. Plus, there's an XRT concept that suggests a more off-road focused variant might be on the way. Now, as you can probably imagine, this sort of boxy styling with lots of upright surfaces isn't very good for aerodynamics. In fact, internally, Hyundai describes it as an aero disaster, but it's done lots of things to help the new Santa Fe slip through the air as efficiently as possible. So there's some active air at the front here. These flaps stay closed as often as possible. There are some side curtains 
on the outer edges of the front bumper. And if you come around to the side, these door mirrors have been designed to create as little drag as possible. The rear spoiler as well, that has been designed to help the air flow over the car, causing as little drag as possible. In fact, the coefficient of drag of this car is 0.29. That isn't bad at all. It's actually slightly better than the previous generation Santa Fe, which was obviously a lot curvier in its styling. But clearly a car this tall with this much frontal area isn't gonna win any outright efficiency awards. Now under the bonnet of this particular car is a two and a half litre turbocharged gasoline engine. We are in the USA though, remember, and back in Europe, this won't be offered. So there'll be a choice of a regular so-called self-charging hybrid or a plug-in hybrid, just like there is on the current generation car. The self-charging hybrid has a pretty small battery, so it can only manage very short distances in pure electric mode. The plug-in hybrid, of course, has a bigger battery, but it isn't any bigger than the one in the current generation model. So expect a pure electric range of around about 35 miles. That's not bad, but it is worth noting that some of the latest plug-in hybrid SUVs like the Mercedes GLC and the Range Rover Sport can do 70 miles of pure electric driving. And that means that despite the fact they cost quite a lot more than this, they actually offer cheaper benefit in kind tax rates. But Hyundai hasn't ruled out offering a bigger battery version of the plug-in hybrid with a longer all electric range in the future. Now, remember I said the design was a bit divisive. Well, I wasn't really talking about the front or the side. I was mainly talking about the rear. Again, there are similarities with cars like the Disco 4, I'd say, because this rear end is near enough vertical. And unusually, the taillights, you can see this H pattern in them, are positioned very low down. So there's a lot of mass above them. It looks a little bit like a Mercedes G-Class, I'd say, and a little bit perhaps of a Sangyong Rodius as well. I'm not sure Hyundai would be particularly flattered with the comparison to the latter, but the designers definitely haven't played it safe. This is really gonna get your attention. But what do you think of the look of the new Santa Fe? Do you love this boxier, bolder styling? Or do you think it looks a bit similar to some other SUVs? Let us know in the comments below. Now, Hyundai used what it calls a back to front strategy when designing the new Santa Fe, because it started here with a wider tailgate. That was a priority to make this car even more versatile, more family friendly, and better at carrying things like camping gear and sports equipment. And as you can see, this huge aperture here is absolutely enormous. It's 14 and a half centimeters wider than it is on the outgoing Santa Fe. So that's really great for loading and unloading. The actual boot has grown in size compared with the outgoing version as well. So as you can see, even with all seven seats in use, there's still enough room here right at the back for a few bags. But if you drop this third row away, it's very easy to do. And that creates an enormous load area. It's 91 liters bigger than it is in the current generation model. In fact, there's 725 liters below the load cover. This particular car doesn't have one, but as you can see, it clips in there. You can actually store it when it's not needed under the floor down here as well. You can, of course, fold down the second row seats. And if you do that, then you could pretty much fit a mattress in there and have a sleep. This boot is absolutely enormous and as good as it gets for this price point. Hyundai has also designed the tailgate so that a six footer can stand under it and not hit their head. As I said earlier, the wheelbase of the new Santa Fe is bigger than it is on the outgoing model. And that means there's more space inside for your passengers. On this particular car, which is a pure petrol, as I said earlier, that's not gonna be sold in the UK. There is apparently 35 millimeters more legroom, but there's still 20 millimeters more in the self-charging hybrid and the plug-in hybrid versions that are gonna be offered in the UK. I'm just over six feet tall. This seat in front is set up for my driving position. And as you can see, absolutely loads of knee room, loads of foot space under the front seat as well. So this is really, really comfortable and headroom. It's absolutely fine as well. Now, you may have noticed that this particular car only has two seats on the second row, so it's a six-seater. This configuration will certainly be offered in other markets, including North America and South Korea. It hasn't been confirmed if it will be offered in the UK yet, but there will certainly be a seven-seat version, which has three seats in this middle row, just like there is on the outgoing model. These seats are really, really comfortable. They are part electrically adjustable, so you can adjust the angle of the base here and the backrest using little buttons on the side. You can also slide the seats back and forth as well. You have to do that manually. And there's another button down here. That if I press that, then 
the seat will go into maximum recline mode so I can really chill out on a long trip or if I'm parked up, just have a snooze. The storage space in here is really impressive as well. So you've got these pockets on the backs of the front seats here, a pull-out tray in the bottom of the center console. And unusually, the center armrest can not only be accessed from the front, it's also hinged at the front as well. So you can open the lid and reveal the storage in it from the rear here. Everyone in the back has their own USB-C socket. There are a couple of handles here for hanging bags or jackets as well, and a ridiculous amount of cup holders. So on each side of the car, you have two here, and there's another little pocket down here, which is useful for putting a bottle of water or a carton of drink. So overall, really, really impressive, not only in terms of second row passenger space, but storage space as well. But I really want to show you the third row seats because the improvements there are even better. To get into the third row, all you do is you push a button here on the bottom of the seat. It slides out the way and makes it surprisingly easy to get in. And if you need a bit of an extra hand, there is a grab handle here. That's mainly to make it easier to load a roof box on these roof rails, but it is quite useful if you want to pull yourself inside. Now, in the current generation Santa Fe, someone of my height could sit back here on the third row. So it's better than a Land Rover Discovery Sport or a Nissan X-Trail in that respect, but I wouldn't be comfortable for very long, mainly because headroom is really tight. And that's something this boxier styling has really helped with. So apparently there is 69 millimeters more headroom in this car than there is in the outgoing model to the point that I can sit bolt upright here and my head isn't even touching the ceiling. There's more legroom as well and the seating position is higher. So that means I don't feel quite as much like my knees are being forced up towards my chin. So overall, really, really impressive. Not quite as good as something like a BMW X7 or a full-size Land Rover Discovery, but those are of course much, much more expensive cars. They're bigger cars as well. So for the price point, this is as good as it gets. The obsession with cup holders continues because each side of the car has two and there's also another USB-C port for charging your phone. And unusually for third row seats, you can adjust the angle of the backrest as well. So we know this is a lot better than the current generation Santa Fe for people sitting in the back, but what about for the driver? Well, as you'd expect for a car this big, there is absolutely loads of leg and headroom, even though it isn't any wider and not much taller either. So you're certainly not gonna struggle for space. Storage space is even more impressive than in the current car though. So this center armrest, as I mentioned earlier, is hinged at both sides. So you can access it from the front here. There are a couple more cup holders. And here, these two pads here, they're actually wireless chargers. So you can stick your phone on there. They're slightly sticky, so your phone won't slide around and you can charge that without using these USB-C ports if you want to. There's another separate storage area down here below the floating center console, but there's more because there's a glove box down here, pretty reasonable size, a small tray above it, and a second glove box type thingy up here. Now that's pretty interesting because if you press this button here, then what it does is it bathes that area in UVC light. So it will sterilize your phone, your wallet, or perhaps your kids' toys while you're driving along. Now, I think it's fair to say that the interior in the current generation Santa Fe isn't the most exciting, it's very gray, and it's not that interesting to look at, to be frank. Whereas as you can see, this looks a lot more premium, and that's for several reasons. So you've got a far greater use of colors. You've got this cream leather here on the center console, on parts of the dashboard as well, and on the steering wheel here. In fact, this bi-tone steering wheel here is very similar to what you'll find in a Range Rover. There are other things too. So you've got this wood effect finish on the dashboard here, lots of metal effect down here and gloss back on the air conditioning panel. So overall, it feels much more upmarket, much more premium than it does in the current generation model. And actually, I'd say it has the edge over cars like the Nissan X-Trail as well. In terms of material quality, you know, this isn't a BMW X5. The leather on the center console here and on the doors is very obviously fake but build quality feels good. And given how much this car is likely to cost, it is really, really impressive. In terms of driving position, very impressive as well. These seats, they're comfortable. There's plenty of adjustment. This particular car has electric steering column adjustment as well. That will be offered on some of the higher trim levels. So you feel really comfortable. You feel like you're in a really big SUV. Now this huge display here, 
behind the steering wheel is actually two screens. There's a 12.3 inch one behind the steering wheel here. That's for all the driving information and the digital dials. And there's a second 12.3 inch screen for the infotainment system. This whole panel is actually curved and that's designed to make the outer edges easier to reach. The infotainment system has been updated as well and it looks pretty easy to use. It's responsive, the graphics are pretty decent and because you've got large icons on most of the screens, they're pretty easy to hit while driving. So that is an improvement. We'll obviously be assessing the infotainment system more thoroughly when we get the car back in the UK and benchmarking against rivals as well. This is a pre-production car. This air conditioning panel here, it does have some touch sensitive buttons on it, which we're not usually a fan of, but they do seem pretty responsive. And to adjust the temperature, you've got these physical dials here. So you can just twist those to warm up the interior or cool it down again. That's very easy to do, very easy to reach from your natural driving position. As you can see, there is no gear selector down here on the center console. That's actually been moved up here behind the steering wheel. So it's a stalk like it is on Hyundai's electric models. And to start this car, you can of course use a key or you can use an app on your mobile phone, but there is actually a fingerprint scanner up here as well. So overall, huge improvements to the interior design and to quality as well. And I'd say this is certainly one of the best interiors in the class, certainly at this price point. We'll be driving the new Santa Fe in the autumn ahead of first deliveries in the UK in early 2024. Hyundai hasn't confirmed prices and was unwilling to even hint at what this new model might cost, but given it's slightly bigger and has taken a notable step up in terms of interior quality, we wouldn't expect a starting price much below £50,000. That's significantly more than the entry price of a Nissan X-Trail, although still massively undercuts alternatives from premium brands, including the Land Rover Defender and Discovery, the Audi Q7 and the BMW X5. So that's everything you need to know about the new fifth generation Hyundai Santa Fe. But what do you think of the car? Let us know in the comments below. And for lots more reveals and new car reviews, just make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.